After leaving the temple this day, four of the disciples are privately told what the signs of the times would be. Four out of all of the disciples. And we're going to see this. This is a very important time. This is uh, a teaching that Jesus gives to these four disciples that we use a lot in prophecy and teach in teaching of end times. They actually asked Jesus, and this was the last Tuesday, so I guess Jesus is letting him know a little bit more than he had in the past. So it's going to be almost all scripture, because I don't want to do too much commentary. If I do, I'll mess it up, <clears throat> okay? Get your Bible, pencils, and paper out so you can take notes if you're interested in this, because it is important. Along with Daniel and a lot of stuff, the book of Revelation, but here in the center, this is where Jesus really is letting it go. And there's some other New Testament uh, teachings, too, that are that way. But anyway, your Bibles, pencils, and papers. Have you got that angel? Yep, ready to go. Way ahead of you. I know. Uh, a couple of t couple of lessons ago, I had to have you read. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I got things messed up. So be ready to read a scripture or two, okay? Anytime. All right. Three of the gospel writers are re reporting chronologically this time, but we're going to start with Mark. And this will be today's New International Version, Mark 13. It says, As Jesus was leaving the temple, he's leaving the temple, this is where we see this, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings to... Do you see all these great buildings, Jesus replied? Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As I picture this, they would be walking along this way to the Mount of Olives, <clears throat> a little path, or we'd call it a path, but it's probably a good road that we'd be going along, to the Mount of Olives, which was on their way to Bethany to... Mary and Martha and Lazarus' house. Maybe Jesus stopped with James and John and Andrew to rest at the Mount of Olives. So this is quite a quite a walk. It's kind of they're climbing, going down and then climbing up. And as they look back at the uh, temple again, probably sitting down, just kind of looking back at that temple. More questions came to the minds of the disciples about what Jesus said concerning the temple. Hmm. Mark goes on in Mark 13, 30, uh, 3 and 4. It says, as Jesus, Mark 3 and 4, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately for, tell us. When will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? They thought they had a little juice with Jesus and probably could get him to tell them. And he did. <laughs> Matthew says in this context, in Matthew 24, 3, Matthew throws in, Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming? and of the end of the age. Whoa, whoa. So he went on a little bit further. He really nailed them now. The end of the age. And we're going to see several times that Jesus has said, don't ask me about these things. The things Jesus will be talking about now, we talk about today with the strange changes that seem to be taking place in our world. Just see if this, some of this doesn't look very familiar. Today's New International Version, Matthew 24.4. <clears throat> Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. A lot of evangelists and a lot of television, a lot of stuff that can deceive us right now. Five. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. Six, you will hear of wars, wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Don't get upset over these things that are happening today. Such things must happen. Jesus is saying things, these wars and rumors of wars, they must happen. 
But the end is still to come. Like nothing's going to change the plan. Seven. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines. Think of all the hungry people, Dothmoor and places, and earthquakes in various places. Eight. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Birth pains. I haven't been around a woman who is having a baby, but she's having birth pains. The world is right now having birth pains. If you don't believe it, just look at the look at the uh, newspaper and, and listen to the news on TV. When I read about these things that Jesus talks about, I get a sense of a much greater world and life that we are coming to, especially studying the book of Revelation. We have an opportunity to be born again. We have the opportunity right now to be born again, born in the Spirit, spiritually into a world and life that is so totally different from what we experience nowadays. That Jesus can't talk too much about it, except to say that these end times we will see now are just the birth pains. He says these are the birth pains. Wait till you're born. What's going to happen? That we know in part now, but we will know fully then. Don't worry about it. Just trust me, he says. It is hidden because we just couldn't stand to see what is coming. Not that we'd be afraid, but we'd want it now. We just aren't mature or intelligent enough to understand or open-minded enough to accept change, even in the life we have now. Maybe we are that mature and open-minded and would no longer be satisfied living this life we have anymore when there is yet so much work to do for God. God has to leave us here. <laughs> he says there's too much. If the work isn't completed, he leaves us to finish the work that Jesus began bringing in, going to all the world and telling the good news. What's the good news? You better check out what the good news is because we're not giving him good news anymore. Check out what it means, good news. Mark, today's new international version. Mark 13, 9. You must be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. 10. And the gospel must first be preached to the nations. The gospel must be preached to the nations. That's what, all this, this is work that has to be done to the nations. 11. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given you at the time, for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. I love that. This doesn't bother Jesus that there's so many in jail. But if those guys can be converted and not worry about what to say, but let the Holy Spirit speak through them, uh, there'd be big changes in the prisons. Twelve. Brother will betray brother to death and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. Pretty heavy back in those days, this kind of stuff. When we have the Holy Spirit living in us, all we have to do is sincerely pray to Him that He will speak for us when we are having problems or in a business deal <laughs> or dealing with our wives or husbands or family or whatever. Just pray to Him and let the Holy Spirit do the speaking. Probably now with the internet when we're typing, pray to the Holy Spirit, you run my fingers and what I'm saying. When I used to work in the prison ministry, I would <clears throat> tell the, Christ the Christian prisoners who came to the Bible study to do exactly that when they would go to court. And it gave them much peace. I said, don't worry about your return or anything. You do what the God will tell you what to say or say nothing. 
Matthew writes in Matthew 24, 12, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Mark adds to this in Mark 13, 13, everyone will hate you because of me, but those who stand firm to the end will be saved. And those in prison who stand firm to the end with God, no matter who, what crime they have committed, will also be saved. Today's New International Version, Matthew 24, <coughs> 14. And this gospel of the kingdom of, will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then, and then, after it's been preached, and then the end will come. That's what Jesus is telling those four disciples. 15. So when you see standing in the holy place, that would be the temple, when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that caused desolation, and that's the Antichrist. 16. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. 17. Let no one on the housetop go down to take anything out of the house. So you see that Jesus is saying, when you see this, when the Antichrist is declaring himself God. Now Luke gets in here writing, and again we ask, are we seeing Jerusalem being surrounded by armies today? This is, read this, what Luke is saying here. Maybe not completely yet, but Christians are watching for this to happen. Not particularly because of Israel or the Muslims, but because this is a sign of the end times, and it might be Russians. It might be Americans, finally. Egyptians, Chinese, India the UK or Syria. It could be anybody surrounding Jerusalem to get what they want out of there. We're going to read about the Jerusalem because of all of the chaos that seems to be coming to that area. Even now, we can see it starting to happen. Today's New International Version, Luke 21, 20. When you see, here it is, Luke 21, 20. When you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, you will know that its desolation is near. 21. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those in the city get out. Let those in the country not enter the city. 22. For this is the time of punishment and fulfillment of all that has been written. A time that God has been storing up for his wrath to finally be poured out as a world cleansing. The final birth pains, as we said, <laughs> that bring birth to a new world and a new universe that will endure forever, that we have an opportunity to join, join with right now. It's so simple, we can surrender to God. So, okay, it's you, you're the Lord, you're the, you're the one, take over. Our lives don't change. We continue to be the jerks that we always were. <laughs> but this time we have God inside of us guiding our paths. Today's New International Version, Matthew 24, 19. It says, How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. 20. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on a Sabbath. 21. For then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never be equaled again. Never be equaled again. This is it. This is the big one. Unequaled from the beginning of the world. From the beginning of the world, look what's happened. All of the horrible things that have happened so far that we see in history. The flood and all that. Nothing like what's going to happen. And this is what Jesus is saying. This isn't some prophet thousands and thousands of years ago. <clears throat> Luke's record includes the following. In Luke 21, 23b and 24 says, There will be great distress in the land and wrath against this people. Wrath. God's wrath is coming against the Jews. 
24, they will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles. By the Gentiles. And did you know that we're all Gentiles? If we're not Jews, then we're Gentiles. That's why the armies that circled Jerusalem are all Gentiles. Until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. So there's a certain time for this that will be fulfilled. We read about these times of the Gentiles throughout biblical prophecy. <clears throat> Today's New International Version, Matthew 24, 22, 30 through 31, says, If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. The elect, those that are with God. 23, at that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. 24, for, the, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect, he says. They're there to, to try to deceive even the elect, but it's, if it were possible, it's not possible. We are going to sway back and forth, but if God's inside of us, is God going to be deceived? <laughs> no way. 25. See, I have told you ahead of time, Jesus says. 26. So if anyone tells you there he is out in the wilderness, do not go out. Or here he is in the inner rooms. <laughs> do not believe it. 27. For as lightning comes from the east, is visible even in the West, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. 28. Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. 29. Immediately, after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened. The sun is going to be darkened. And we can see that begin to happen when we have a forest fire. The sun is darkened. And the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky. And the heavenly bodies will be shaken. 30. At that time the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. And all the peoples of the earth will mourn. They will see Jesus. And they say, oh no, it's true. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. 31. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds. He's going to gather us up from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. This would be the second advent of Jesus Christ. I can just imagine the four disciples sitting there listening <laughs> to all of this from Jesus and I dream oh man that must be a blast for them today's new international version Luke 21 25 there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and stars on the earth nations will be anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea it's just going to be ah, rah, 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 rah. tsunamis everywhere 26 People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world. For the heavenly bodies will be shaken. It's like the stars are being shaken. 27. At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. 28. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Oh, wow. If we can only live in this time. But at that time, it will be drawing near. We just read Matthew say that he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. Matthew 24, today's New International Version, Matthew 24 to 32, it says, Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs are tender and its leaves come out, you know the summer is near. 33. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near. Right at the door. 34. Truly, I tell you, that this generation will certainly not 
pass away until all of these things have happened. 35. Heaven on earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. To answer the question about when all of these, this would take place, <laughs> it's like Jesus went through a lot of stuff, but now to answer that, today's New International Version, Matthew 24, 36, <clears throat> says, but about the day or hour, and I can see all the disciples on the edge of their rocks, <laughs> About the, age, about the day and hour, no one knows. Oh. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, Jesus says, but only the Father. 37. As it was in the days of Noah, so I have to think back to Noah and the ark, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. 38. For in those days, before the flood, people were eating and drinking, they were getting married and giving in marriage up to the day of Noah entering the ark. 39. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Big surprise. 40. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. 41. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Why? It's because one belonged to God, gave herself to the Lord, and the other one said, ah. 42. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. 43. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of the night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. 44. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. <sighs> I'm tired. <laughs> there is still more to come, but that was that was taught on the final Tuesday and then Tuesday afternoon is a whole other thing so this is in the morning the reason there is so much right now will be revealed soon when suddenly there is silence see you next time now I live in all your promises and nothing seems worthwhile Except to be in your kingdom of love, my Lord.